Formula 1 moves to Brazil for round 4 of the season. Following on from the cancellation of the Mexican Grand Prix, this will still be classed as the fourth round of the championship. And in years gone by, this race would usually host the season finale or the second to last race. And I moved early in the calendar following the decision as the last four races could not be held last season to definitely get them in this year. Whether they're even coming here earlier in the season, the weather will always be a factor. And there's no surprise, there's going to be a chance for rain come race day. Williams though bring their first upgrade package of the season, with hopes of defending world champion Mick Schumacher finally being able to get his first legitimate points on the board, as the Germans still yet to score a top 12 finish from either of the first two races. Off me though, also looking strong out of the blocks, despite not having any upgrades of their own for this weekend. Both Josh Tira and Kevin Magnussen were easily inside the top 5 in all practice sessions on long run pace and in the qualifying runs done in practice 3. A lot of attention though was on new home favourite Sergio Tete camera and the Brazilians spent much time following, one, following around one of the Red Bulls in FP2 as he loves to get into grips with his home circuit. Hey guys, Renault here. Welcome back to Formula 1. This time for round 4 of the season, even though it is only the third race for the Brazilian Grand Prix following the cancellation of the Mexican Grand Prix due to technical difficulties where I'd recorded the race but the game crashed as soon as I crossed the finish line and I did that for the F2 race which I recorded first as well and I didn't want to do an entire 50 minute race again for it to just do the exact same thing again so I just thought best to leave that one and skip ahead here. You've got Alex Albon there in P16 in the Red Bull. It's definitely got a lot of work to do in, uh, in the race now coming on to the formation lap we can get a first glimpse over the grid and now taking a look at the starting grid. It's Lewis Hamilton taking pole and the three points once again so every pole position so far has gone to Hamilton. It's Hulkenberg on the front row with him. Daniel Kvyat with a good lap in the Mercedes start from P3. Ahead of the second Toyota of Matsushita in fourth. And we get fifth in the lead of the Alfa Romeos. Sean McVan starts from sixth in the second Renault. Ahead of Charles Leclerc in the Ferrari. And then Vettel with his teammates starting just behind. It's Pierre Gasly ninth and Mick Schumacher with a much improved qualifying starting inside the top ten. Oriento starts from P11 ahead of the lead of the Rebels in P12 and Max Verstappen. Rebels, they show pace in, pra in, uh, in pre-season, but it's definitely not looking to trans transfer over to uh, the races so far. Stroll with a good up though starts from P13 ahead of his teammate Sergio Perez. And then home favourite Seti Cameron 15th ahead of the other Rebels, Alex Albon. So Albon is starting the last place of the four Red Bull back drivers. K Mag though did, couldn't get together either, starting from 17th ahead of Norris and Russell with Nicholas Satifi in the second Williams bring up the last place on the grid. We are then looking onto us starting from P5. It's a good qualifying effort we're on the, uh, the racing line, so we're on the side where we want to be, although the inside line, especially with the short run into turn one, I honestly I prefer to be over there since we can never really get a good start there since this, this car's tyres won't be up to temperature yet, so we're going to probably lose a few places off the start anyway. But now coming to the five red lights for the start of the Brazilian Grand Prix. Lights out and away we go. There's like a premium start there from the front row. A premium start there from everyone actually. And then they run that down into turn one, everyone space out a little bit. We've got one of the fries, they've got Charlotte going through one out of turn one, we're going to have to back out that because I don't think it's ourselves. So we managed to keep it through those stuck in ourselves, so we're just going to squeeze out the Monegas driver. Uh, that's actually because there's a huge bottom leg behind, we've got one of the Alpha Towers there, Pierre Gasly trying to make it three one now, he does with Sebastian Vettel and Mick Schumacher. And then getting a good run there on the fries, or the, the Honda engine working well in the Alpha Tower it seems, as everyone managed to survive the bottleneck through the first sector, so it's like I don't actually see any parts of carbon fire flying off, so it looks like everyone's managed to survive the first half of the lap at least anyway. And they're coming into the middle part of the lap. Well, unless you're going side by side with someone, there really is no overtaking opportunities through, through any part of this lap, any part here. It's going to be a 36 lap ahead of us, and we're actually P6, so we lost one place at the start, which I was kind of expecting. We lost it to uh, jean luc Verne, and the Renault, who was in the last race, is a faster car than the Alfa Romeo at this stage, at least going faster anyway. We know it goes for Alfa Romeo, so you think they'll still be faster, so... Here's a place to a faster car, which I probably would have lost anyway, so not too big of a deal. Although we've got Daniel Kvyat and the Merc in front of us. I've seen from the last race, the Mercs are pretty even paced the Alfa Romeo, so hopefully we can try and catch and pass the Russian at some stage. And looking at I think now at Daniel Kvyat, you know, looking in front of Matsu Sheets, he's going to try and make a move there on the Renault, going to go in the long way around the outside line, and squeeze Huckabay to the apex, keeping side by side with the German. Matsu with the outside line, which then turns 
the yeah, outside here once again. Hawker Bay still keeping it up the inside line. It's the battle now for P6. Massey Jr. with the great start to this race from P5 going up now to try and get a P2 in this race. Hawker Bay's left to the table, but Massey Jr. moves aggressively in the inside line. Hawker lose two places now. We've got the good straight line speed from that Mercedes of Dano Kvyat trying to make Holly around the outside line as well. And then trying to hold it through of the inside line here. And, and intense inside once again. On the inside line, he's trying to squeeze out Hulkenberg in the run over Hulk. Once again, Keith is full planted. Keith around the side. Now he's still there from the German. He means plenty of experience enough now. He, he, he's uh, won a race back in 2014, so he definitely knows how to handle the Formula 1 car. Actually, Bray Chase could be out there. Kvyat has actually made a little bit of contact with the back of the runner, but I don't think he got any damage though. Uh, luckily, there for Dano Kvyat. Now they're coming through the uh, the end of the uh, the wavy section here in the middle part of the lap. And then battling really allowed us to get onto the back of this queue along with uh, in front of us here as well. And then the battle for P3 is still going to be done straight once again because it's not, not going to have DRS here. It's going to be about all the straight line speed, just the natural straight line speed of these cars. Now Dana could be out in the deep with the uh, not such a you know, Once again, he gets squeezed off aggressively there from Hulkenberg. Hulkenberg leaving uh, no quarter to the straight line speed of the Mercedes pulling through that good AMG branded Mercedes engine. Trying to hold it around the outside line, just keeps it through. With the runner there, just squeezes him out. Actually, where's Vernon out of nowhere? Managed to make a move. Okay, yeah, that's going to make a move on his teammate as well. And now he's going to be Vernon moving now into P3, the, uh, the 2017 champion. Of course, he won his championship here in 2017. So this race proved to be uh, quite a favourite track of John Eric Vernon. And we've got a massive battle. We've got the Fries coming into play as well. And the Hulk's lost another place there. Two of so has, has Hulk got some kind of car issue? He's just lost two places there in two straights, and the straights is where he can't really defend, but we're seeing some, some good speed from Vern. So we're still in P6, it's got Vern of the now leading, leading train cars. It's Hulk in front of that, we can just can manage to squeeze out Seb Vettel there in the Ferrari. So the Ferrari is showing a good turn of pace for, for the first time this season, really. I mean, in the first race, it's they were really went nowhere back at USA in you know, the season opener at Canada. The, uh, the Ferraris really went as absolutely nowhere in qualifying or in the races, really. And we're, set, we're ever a second down on our fastest lap, and it just shows how much time we're losing being stuck behind these two cars in front of us, just constantly battling as they are. And now uh, you can see Hulk losing touch to the cars in front here again as well. So let me try and make a move on Hulk. You've got DRS just about as you've got Kvyat. I managed to make a move back past the other runner. So Hulk just Kvyat with a good turn of pace. We try and go in the outside line here of Hulk. But with the inside line, just going to manage to hold it there on the inside. But Hulk really is really struggling for pace in this stage. And obviously, you must have some kind of car issue or just uh, running on some sort of low engine mode. Maybe you've got some, some kind of overheating issue. Not sure, maybe. But through the. Uh, Straight, so he managed to keep it first, so through the part of the lap where we can have taken and managed to, but couldn't hard cut onto the lap. We now go we set our fastest middle setting, try to hold it around the outside line, pitch up here, basically squeeze off the track. We just managed to keep it up on the game as we still get a good run here around the outside line. Oh, it's going to make us fight for this pitching, we try and go the long way down. That's a brilliant camera shot there, sweeping through. We're going to give Hulk a bit of a squeeze, it's going to be a taste of amazing, it slows down. That could allow his fellow German Sebastian Vettel to make a move pass as well. The Ferrari engine working well with our Alfa Romeo and with the works Ferrari as well for the first time this season. I mean, we've got the same engine. It seems the Ferrari car seems to be a lot worse than the Alfa Romeo at this early stage in the season. And the further down we've got Pierre Gasly managed to make a move on the other Ferrari with Charles Leclerc. So there's one Ferrari moves forward, the other one moves back. So to uh, keeping the equilibrium there between the two of them. And uh, we've got the, the uh, Lee McLaren of Harry Anton looking very interested up behind the back now of Charles Leclerc as well. And Leclerc are dropping back actually from Pierre Gasly, so the Alfa Tauri with a, with a good turn of pace of Ferrari of Leclerc is not so good. In pace, and now moving on to uh, lap 10, we've now got to Dano Kvyat, who's now been re overtaken obviously by uh, Vern. Now it seems the uh, the natural pace of the Mercedes bringing him slowly back into play with the rest of us now. I mean, Kvyat, we know he fights and he fights with every single car he's given, no matter uh, how uh, good or bad it appears to be. We seem to be fair play, I mean, Russell qualified in 19th place, so the DAS, at least for Russell, isn't really uh, working out too well, it'd be proving quite difficult to drive. But Kvyat seems to um, have a good handle on it this weekend. And then with the DRS, can try and make a move on the Russian. Itama going to move to the inside line of Danny Kvyat. Kvyat's going to try and sweep it around the outside line. We're going to force the Russian out wide, though. We're going to compromise him. Now, gonna, gonna, now Vettel, once again, is going to pick up the spoils of our hard work and makes a move on Danny Kvyat. Uh, which one then is going to they both going to have DRS? And they do. Now, is Kvyat going to be able to come back? Now we've got Vettel actually trying to make a move on us. Okay, go to the outside line of ourselves. Vettel we must have had that engine turned up to the maximum, trying to sweep around their outside line. We just managed to squeeze out the, uh, the five time champion, compromise his line. And unlike. When Vettel got past Kvyat, Kvyat come in the most of that opportunity to uh, repass the German. So we might actually uh, slow up as much as we did, actually give ourselves a little bit of a breather. And we might actually now just have ourselves out of the DRS range. 
and then Rafi Levin back into P4. So we're getting close to the podium places. I mean, we, we're close. I we think we finished fourth, or was it fifth last time? We're in P4 now. So can we try and possibly make an overtake on them? We're, we're ahead of one Renault, so there's no reason why we can't overtake the other. Once again, like the last race at USA, we've got to chase down John Egbert if you want to improve our position. And we definitely out of DRS range of the cars behind. Actually, got cars coming in though. Is this Lewis Hamilton? Is that Matsushita? Or oh, the guy drive through penalty? I can't tell. The, the pit crew are out. And I think it's uh, Matsushita. And he's going onto another that soft tyre. So Toyota not fancying their their uh, their tyre wear. It seems well, at least not with Matsushita. And it looks like the Toyota boys are going to be trying a twos up now. We're on a one stop for definite now. Trying. Over I mean, this appears to be the Achilles heel. Then not Toyota got the, the great speed, the improved downforce. But the tyre wear seems to not quite uh, be as optimal as they were thinking or hoping it would be. And that's Ishita now is legitimately behind us because he, we've, he's got another stop to make. We've got our only stop to make. So Matsushita Ishita has got to try and find, what, 15 seconds on himself once to uh, repass us again. So we could actually be on for our, our first podium of the season. And we've got uh, Mick Schumacher here in the Williams in a little bit of a no man's land, well, at least he was. Until, uh, until Masachita came up right behind him. So now we're into P3, legit a legitimate, as it sounds, podium position. Masachita, we've seen the, uh, the mad push he put on in the early laps. So he's got to do the exact same thing again now if he wants to uh, get back into second place or at least steal our, uh, our podium. Now it's Kvyat then back as the car now in front of us. And now we've got Lewis Hamilton in the pit house, the race leader coming in. The race leader also doing a two stop. I don't see why. Well, he's done 12 laps, got about, was that, 24 to go? And we can easily do that on a set of hard tyres, or medium that stretch, but no, it's soft tyres again. So Toyota, the only team trying a two-star strategy. So it seems they're definitely having some kind of issue, at least, uh, with their tyre wear. Don't really know what's going on there with them. And Hamilton, he's come out... Is that a shot of clothes behind us? He's still behind us, so... I mean, he's got, he's got quite a bit of a gap over his teammate, which he had built up. Now they're onto lap 16. We're currently in the lead of the race. Everyone else has stopped, I think, apart from us. And now we've got Lewis Hamilton right up there. So I was thinking about Hamilton making a two-stop. It's not going to matter, because he's going to pass us anyway. So Hamilton with some crazy, crazy pace. And he's been able to catch us up before we've even made us up. We've seen he came out behind sh just in front of Charles Leclerc. Leclerc was way behind us. Now Hamilton's going to make a move to the inside line. We, we, we need to try and pit. So we actually need to get on the brakes here, let Hamilton through Hamilton and not contempt on waiting. He wants to make a point, prove the point, and build his gap with his, uh, his dominant, as it seems, Toyota car, though the uh, dominant car appears to have an obvious weakness with its tyre wear. Finally, into the pit box now, and we're going on to a set of the medium tyres. And these mediums will take us to the end of the race, barring a safety car or getting a puncture or anything like that. So, uh, Everything going to plan, we're going on to the end of the race. I also it looks like Sergio Perez is going to the end of the race with us as well. We didn't quite see what time the Mexican was going on, but the Aston Martin could be gone for them for a possible points once again. It's medium size actually the mediums work quite well with the uh, the livery. I mean the livery it's um it's out there, to say that much. The pink and the Aston Martin like neon greenish yellow. Didn't really think it'd be a colour combo that works. I mean, it works better than I was thinking it would, but the delivery still, I think, a little bit aesthetically challenged, but um, that's what the team went for. And they probably know better than what I do, as I get paid to drive the car and I get paid to design them. Without further on, looking at one of the Toyota, which I mean, is probably Lewis Hamilton. He's coming in, uh, unsurprisingly, for his second. Well, he has to make his best up, he's only used soft tyres so far in this race. I imagine now it's going to be a set of, of uh, mediums for Hamilton to go to the end of the race. Indeed it is a set of medium size for the Toyota. Still couldn't quite see which one, which one of them it is. I was going to come back out on the track. I think it's actually uh, Matsushita in the uh, the second of the two Toyota. Once again, Nobby with a lot of work to do. I mean, he scored second place in the uh, first two races so far, so he's probably going to with want to keep the other uh, one two going for Toyota and they actually got uh, one of the Ferraris here to bring out just behind Sebastian Vettel I mean he's on harder tyres, he's on slower tyres but his tyres are going to be up to temperature and now we're further on in that lap in the same lap but now right up front now looking at Lewis Hamilton in the other uh, lead of the Toyota he's not a care in the world so far for the championship leader after the first two rounds after uh, winning the uh, the first two races he's going to look to try and make it uh, all three at uh, this race as well, but he's coming in for his second stop. 
and if Matthew is coming out around Sebastian Vettel, then Hamilton may come out actually still in the lead of the race. Hamilton might have built a big enough gap to still actually uh, be winning once he exits the pits now on the uh, medium compound tyre. And the weather is looked a bit doom and gloom all right, so, so maybe a chance of rain. Maybe that's why uh, Toyota were trying the strategy, or just uh, maximum attack. And either way, it looks like it's still going to be working out. It's Hamilton, is he still in the lead of the race? I've seen the car coming through the S's there, so maybe he's still in the lead. He might be in second place, not quite sure. But he's going to rejoin on the track, and there's the uh, one of the Renaults. Now, it depends which Renault that is. If that's Hulkenberg, he's down the order. If it's Vern, he's still in the lead. It's Vern. Hulkenberg is still down the order, and it's Hamilton that still leads the Grand Prix now. It's lap 27, we our personal best first sector. Not quite so good through the middle, running out a little bit wide through these tyres. A starting spot like we've had to push like anything. Now we've got Massey Shooter right here behind us. And the Toyota, with this uh, monstrous engine speed, is probably not going to be behind us then for too much longer. Massey Shooter pulls the inside line, yeah, squeeze as much as we can, but Massey Shooter gets a grip with the best contact. And so there's a bit of Carlin Tyler flying, so I think we've just lost a little bit there of our front wing. Now they're in three, turn one. Massey Shooter then makes his place towards that. No, 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 I'm not seeing any damage to the front wing there of the Toyota. So now then, no, 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 we've we, so we're running out wide. We've definitely got front wing damage now on our car. Uh, can now, can we even hold position? Because the damage, you, you can definitely see there, we, we've lost about half an end plate. So that's going to be massively effective, especially through this middle sector, which is all just, it's all just corners. The middle part here of the lap here, the Interlagos circuit. You can see how much time already we're going to stay on the track. So you've got to be uh, careful doing it done for track limits. I mean. You're running out wide, but still might actually get, end up getting done. Now looking at one of the uh, the Ferraris here of of uh, Charles Leclerc, this is just about told there from the helmet. There's got one of the Alpha Tauris chasing him down, which is probably uh, still Pierre Gasly, and I guess he with the DRS on the back of the Ferrari is going to go to the outside line here of the Monegas driver, the uh, the race winner from last season, the the opening round race winner from last season. And giving you side by side still. The French are going to try and go the long way around the outside line. Looks like just managed to squeeze out slots back in front of the uh, of the uh, the French. We've got Magnussen out of nowhere. Where did Magnussen come from? Make a move on the going to go to the outside line. Oh, Charles Leclerc going to try and keep it around the outside line here. Of the flag. he's done it around the outside line. A brilliant overtake from Kevin Magnussen. We've seen it before. Magnussen, he just comes alive in the end of races. The harder tyres appear to be what suits the Dane better. And out of nowhere, which he's 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 a. Uh, He's done the race version of the RKO out of nowhere, just makes two overtakes on the squabbling Claire and Gasly, and he's just found the gap. He just made his mistake through, and that's just showing why uh, Alfa Romeo won him. Why, I mean, I, I had a little bit of a say in it as well. But this is why we wanted uh, K Mag in the team. He's, he's qualifying has not been too great, but we've seen the pace he's had in races. It's been phenomenal for the car that he's in. And you can see the two of them going side by side up in front of the Claire and Gasly. And this point, Magnussen is so far behind, the two of them just slow each other up so much they have to get out of the throttle. And then Magnussen with Cody's mental throw makes him move down. Gasly, the player goes defensively, but the speed of the Alfa Romeo with the uh, little bit of a lower drag setup has managed to find the, find the grip, finally around the outside line as well. Came out there for some brilliant, brilliant driving. Move of the race, driver of the day for that move alone. Apart from how to, of course, he's winning the race. But for the person not winning the race, driver of the day would definitely have to be K Mag with a brilliant move like that. But moving from one end of the grid to the other, this is the battle now for to uh, not be in last place. Now then it's Shaw makes a move, a convincing move there past Nicholas Tifi. Because the only rookie on the grid for this year is still keeping up this on both of these on the hard tyres, so he's not going to be like there's any uh, tyre advantage there between the two of them. It seems to be a bit of a, a reality check as well for Latifi after his brilliant P7 finish and, and was running up in the podium places last time out at USA. He's uh, come back down to earth quite with quite with, uh, with quite a crash actually. Now then, on to lap 33. We've now got Hulkenberg up behind us. He's on hard ties, so uh, whatever issues Hulk was experiencing earlier on, definitely now seem to be fixed because the uh, the Renault on hard ties, and, and uh, he's actually now caught us up. And then because he's on, he's on slow ties, but he's been able to push like anything because like push like what Mark Webber used to do back in his Red Bull days. He was waiting for hard tyres so he could push more, so he could lean more on the tyres, so he could uh, keep uh, more of an aggressive pace, even if the tyres, in theory, were slower. Now we've got Hawkenberg now running the outside line of us, he's going to look to three rounds, and uh, that's quite embarrassing, actually. A Renault engine car, and the Renault works car, so we just able to be passed on. So Renault, we, they were absolutely uh, a bit crap last year, honestly, there's no other way to put it. 
And you see, they've, they've come on leaps and bounds so far. To be, I mean, coming into the race, they were second in the constructors' check in the constructors standings. And with uh, one car on the podium, the other one in fourth, they're still going to be in second place as well. And they're probably going to be building that gap. So Renault, definitely, uh, they're a force to be reckoned with in this season so far. And onto the end of that lap, lap 35. Yeah, we just we've just got nothing. We can't do anything. And now we've got Vettel now gaining on the back of us. Our medium sizes are definitely, yeah, definitely past their best. But uh, he's talking about holding off the uh, the five-time champion, Sebastian Vettel, the Ferrari. Definitely looks to be uh, showing a good time of pace this weekend. I mean, I mean, the track is in many ways a kind of power circuit. So um, yeah, and the Ferrari is the uh, the overall car. The SF uh, 1000 isn't exactly a. Uh, a fast car, but now I'm looking up front to Lewis Hamilton now who puts the uh, Aston Martin of Lars Stroller lap down and he's managed to, uh, well, he's been re-taken by Nicholas Latifi and then Latifi, this is going to be, it's all about home pride between these two. Now Lewis Hamilton around the, uh, where he overtook Glock to win the championship a few years ago and he manages to make the move on Latifi, he gets well out of the way, I think a bit too much out of the way for those, that's going to be a compromising now, we're going to be the battle to not finish in the last place. And then Lewis Hamilton now coming up to the finish line, and Lewis Hamilton makes it three wins from three races, which have actually happened still, three from three for Lewis Hamilton, and just behind, I actually think Stroll got it, I think Stroll just got Nicholas Latifi there on the line. The Hamilton, the Hamilton Toyota combo proving absolutely dominant so far in these opening rounds. And showing his commitment to the project and why he moved there in 2017 to to uh, join Toyota seems the, uh, the the hard work definitely paying off now, and we're definitely holding off Sebastian Vettel as he comes up to the line. He's going to finish in P5, P5 once again, two fifth places for this race and last race. So uh, the consistency is definitely good, definitely uh, definitely up there. That's what we need. I think that's definitely going to keep Alpha in P3 in the constructors. But Gunther Steiner once again. Uh, Pass from last year, nowhere, absolutely nowhere, the bottom car. And now the team took them over, brought in their own car, and Lewis Hamilton, once again, is your race winner. Three wins from the three races which have actually happened. And so you so far looking absolutely unstoppable. And the reliability of the car seems to be a really good as well. And then we've got Pierre Gasly P13, so unfortunately there to not get points for the Frenchman, you put up a great race. Taking a look at the results for those who scored points in this race. And Lewis Hamilton takes another convincing win ahead of Jean Eric Verne. He gets his first podium for Renault, I think, since he actually joined them in the end of 2018. His second place, 11 seconds behind, so Hamilton it wasn't exactly a dominant win, but he just had enough to uh, take the victory. And Matthew Shida gets back on the podium with P3, so three races, and Toyota been on the podium with both cars for all three of them. If that's not a dominant side, don't really know what is in this early stage of the season. It's the second run of Hulkenberg in fourth. He managed to beat us by four seconds in the end, so in two laps, Hulk pulled out uh, quite the margin, I'd say about three and a half seconds. And we just managed to uh, beat Sebastian Vettel by uh, just over two seconds in the end. Down to Kvyat, down in seventh place, so it's a valiant effort from Kvyat, but uh, the Merck not ideally paced for where they want to be so far. Then you got Alex Albon, the lead Red Bull in 8th, so Albon may not have qualified well, but he came over to finish as the leader of the Red Bulls. With uh, Perez, ninth nice place in the Aston Martin, so another great race there from the Mexican. And there's some more solid points for Aston Martin, with the uh, McLaren and Avery Harianto in P10. Ahead of K-Mag in 11th, and Charles Leclerc just managing to uh, sneak the final point in 12th in the second of the Ferraris. And now moving on to the uh, point standings, and unsurprisingly it's still a Toyota 1-2. Hamilton now with a 26 point lead to Hamilton after three races, but round four is already over a race wins of points worth clear over his teammate Matsushita. And Nobby increases its gap over Hulkenberg now to uh, seven points, he's in third. And Vern in the second run and I guess up into P4. On the 35 points, joint with Kvyat, but on better result, Vern's in front. And we remain where we were in P6, which is the thing way of finishing the standings last year, so improvements definitely make it a difficult, much better car to warrant this P6. And with six points clear of Sebastian Vettel, he moves ahead of Sergio Perez, even though they're still joint on points. Sete Camera didn't think he got any points this this race, but still in eighth place in the Alpha Tower, he's still lead of the Red Bull uh, cars, the Red Bull family of cars. You got Latifi down to tenth place in the Williams. Ahead still of Max Verstappen, which is still an achievement in itself. 
and Alex Albon gets up into a 12th place in the second of the Red Bulls. And now on to the constructor standings. And it's much the same story as it was last time. Toyota massively in front, 48 points clear after three races. But, but fair play to Renault though, from 9th place last season in the standings to currently 2nd place and uh, looking quite convincingly like they deserve it so far. They've got quite a gap uh, back to uh, Mercedes who still just about managed to hold on to uh, P3 to give you out putting in the work. Russell where uh, not so good this weekend. Alfa Romeo still though in P4, which I'm, I'm happy with that. We've uh, definitely improved from last year. With Ferrari getting up now into 5th place, like Ferrari finally getting their act together now. Get up into fifth, two points clear then of Red Bull who dropped down into P6. We have the Williams down then into seventh on 22 points, one point clear of McLaren. And Aston Martin with Sergio's uh, crucial points get up into last place back ahead, or well, back out of last place with Alpha Tari dropping down now into 10th place. So if you enjoyed this race, remember to uh, leave a like on the video, it's much appreciated. Leave a comment down below on your thoughts on this race as well. If you're new, uh, remember to hit that subscribe button and uh, notification bell to so you on any of these future races or any of my other uploads. So there's going to be a link in the description as well to uh, the driver of the day vote, which uh, will be straw polls to vote there for your driver of the day. And there's going to be a link there to the wiki for this for this series and this season as well. So I mean, there's one for every season. If you fancy a, a read, if I look back past, that's what happened since this series began back with the 2014 series season and. Um, progressed up to now so there's a wiki for every season, every team, every driver and it uh, took a lot for me to actually get all that done because you think of how many drivers have been over the seasons and updating each one every race and all the teams and that as well that have come and gone. So yeah it's a lot of work for me to put in to uh, update that every time so uh, I'd appreciate it if you're gonna uh, want to give that a look. So yeah thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time.